for everyone watching this from both M4 and me, we wish you a happy 2017. Hello everyone, my name... God, what is my name? What is my name on the last day of the year? Dorica. My name is Dorica. And welcome back to the world of hydraulic suspension. This is Zalmaniac playing a Swedish tank as a Swede. The day the Swedish tanks got released, Zalmaniac slammed out the free experience to go all the way to the tier 10 on both of the lines. And this is the result, playing the STRV 103B. And the thing with the Swedish tanks is, if you are living under a rock, you haven't been paying attention to World of Tanks, or you just found this channel, you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, and who I even am. The Swedish tanks have a hydraulic suspension, so instead of you have a gun in a turret that moves up and down, or in a gun mantlet, the whole tank moves up and down. The gun is fixed in position. That's it, that's basically the whole new mechanic of the Swedish tanks. And the thing about this is, this is a new mechanic that has been added in World of Tanks since the autoloaders were introduced. And I might be thinking, autoloaders have been in the game for quite some time. How long ago were they introduced? Four years ago. The 4th of January 2012, Wargaming decided that adding the French was a good idea. So that's exactly what they did. They added the French autoloaders, and the French were the first one then the Americans came, and then every other nation suddenly got autoloaders, and then everything had an autoloader gun somewhere, hidden deep within their, I don't know, tech trees. But the French were the first, and that patch was called Patch 0.7.1. We are currently in Patch 9.17. A whole history of World of Tanks has happened before you started playing, or while you were playing. A lot of things have happened in World of Tanks. Like a lot. Thinking about it, I mean, Jesus. But I'm going to be honest here, Wargaming has actually been quite generous giving us two lines in the Swedish tech tree instead of last year's one medium tank line in the Czechoslovakian tech tree. And with the Czechoslovakian tech tree, the interesting thing is that line really started at tier 9 when the Skoda T50 was there. That was a three shot autoloader with 1.8 seconds between shots and the tier 10 is just even better than the tier 9. The whole rest of that line is just basically designed to work yourself to tier 9 and 10. With the Swedish, that is a bit different. You have at tier 8 starting basically the interesting part of the line. You have the Emil 1, which are the autoloaders, very heavily armored turret tanks, and the hydraulic suspension tank destroyers, the UDAS, the SDRV 1030, and SDRV 103B, which is Zal playing right here. But before that, it is not even that bad. They are kind of standard tanks, but they're not bad tanks, like the Czechoslovakian were. I mean, look at the tier 5 dank, dank destroyer. Oh, my brain. The tier 5 tank destroyer, it only fires heat with a derp gun. Now, that is interesting because you cannot pen anything that is even slightly heavily armored and you won't do damage just like you would with high explosive. I skipped the tier 5 because I thought it was atrocious. I've played three games and in those three games, I could only fire one shot before I would die because the reload is so long, I couldn't pen anything. And I just thought it was horrendous. So I've now got the tier 6 shed, which I'm hopefully going to enjoy. I mean, hopefully. I mean, it's still stock. Personally, I'm going to play every single tank in both of these tech lines. Because I skipped the tier 9 at the Czechoslovakia. Not that I really feel bad about it. I mean, I'm still quite happy that I did because the tier 9 and tier 10 were amazing. And the rest of the tech tree was a bit shit. But the Swedish are interesting because they're not bad. Except for the tier 5 tank destroyer. God, that tank. And what you see Zal doing here is basically utilizing the tank for what it was designed. Defending. The Swedish were never thinking about attacking a different country. They were about the defense of Sweden. That's why the Kranva and the Emils just have such heavily turret armor. They were designed to sit in a ditch, just their turret showing and a gun that could fire anything moving towards them. The armor was so thick, the enemy could not possibly defeat the tanks. And that same idea was there for the SDRV tanks. They had such sloped armor, anything that would hit would just ricochet off. The hydraulic suspension would make it so that if they would sit in a dip, they could raise themselves and lower their guns and all that good stuff so that they would show only the roof and the gun of their tank. That was the whole idea of these tanks. 
not for attacking, but literally for the defense of Sweden. And that's exactly what Zal did here. He sat in the bush. Okay, then again, he didn't really have to use his hydraulic suspension, but the camo rating on this tank is quite good if you have a camo crew, a camo net, brothers in arms, and you're using food. And that's exactly what Zal has got in this tank. He's got all four of the good stuff, basically helping his camo rating, his gun handling, everything to be as maximized as possible. Now, the interesting thing is Wargaming gave you these holiday ops missions to get female crew members for the Swedish tanks, and in particular, the Swedish tank destroyers. But that was more of a... That was the idea at the beginning. They noticed people were complaining, Oh, I don't really need a crew for the tank destroyers because I'm gonna play the heavy tank, so I need a gunner! Moo, moo, moo. So Wargaming added a mission. If you have a tier 10 tech tree over tier 10 decoration, hell, festive decoration, tech tree, whatever, tree, Christmas tree, how it's, I don't know the words. You have the ability to get a female gunner for these tanks. Now, the interesting thing is you can have five crew members while the two top tier tanks both have three crew members. So if you still have missions to do, personal missions, you actually can get a female crew member for or a female crew for both of the tier 10s. Now here comes my predicament. I got three female crew members before these holiday ops missions were even announced. I got three female crew members for the tank destroyers. And then Wargaming added these missions. And then, long story short, I now have eight female crew members for the Swedish tanks. So, I mean... Good, because I will have female crews in both of my tier 10 Swedish tanks. The thing is, I will have two female crew members left. So I, can put, I can put them in the Emil 1 for Clan Wars. But still, it feels kind of bad, man. Feels kind of bad. I mean, I could have used those female crew members. Those three I would have then spare on a different tank. That would be pretty cool. But no. Actually, I have no clue on what tank I would even put them in. I mean, I've got basically every single tier 10 tank that I want right now. Hmm. No, I, no, no, I actually, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I would even put three female crew members if I had the ability to choose them now. Because I've got a good crew in every single thing that I want or have. So, yeah. Hmm. I guess I could have put them in a, the 430 or maybe the IS-4, but I'm so far away from these tanks that female crew would probably be, well, wasted for a very, very, very long time. Oh, did you see how Zell dealt with that 140? That 140 was like, Oh, look at me, I found the back of this tank destroy and Oh, I mean, this is a pretty kill, easy for me. And then Zell just backed up. Because this tank has a 45 kilometer top speed going backwards. And that 140 had no clue what the hell was happening. Any normal tank destroyer would have started making circles, turning, trying to get his gun pointed towards that 140. Not this tank. This tank will just drive away backwards. Surprise the complete hair off of his enemies and then shoot him. Anyway, I'm gonna speed this up from now on because there's a lot of lot of things happening. That grill's fast enough to come back, but it's just... Uh, I mean, are they gonna come back? Uh, oh, wait, I started... Oh, look! The grill actually came back! But, you know, Zal being in siege mode, he will be fast enough to uh, yeah, get a shot of into the grill before he even got spotted. Now, the T44-100 probably came back as well. But, you know, the thing is, frontally, that T44-100 simply cannot penetrate this tank. He doesn't have the overmatch possibility, nor the penetration to, well, defeat Zal at this point. And Zal's just gonna sit out and cap. <laughs> Oh, before I go, there will be another video today, a bit of a weird one, and a video on the 1st of January tomorrow, of course, I don't know what I'm really talking about here, I mean, it's a Sunday, of course you will get a video, that has become a regular thing now, I'm not quite sure how that happened, but the, the news is now a, a regular video series, apparently. Anyway, video tomorrow, video today, later on, as well. Happy 2017!